Jurassic World was the long-awaited return to the story of Jurassic Park. It had been 14 years since audiences had last seen dinosaurs roaming in the world created by Michael Crichton, Steven Spielberg, and the rest of the franchise's creative geniuses. After several failed attempts to get the fourth Jurassic film beyond conception, writer and director Colin Trevorrow became the winning ingredient to get it made. In 2014, filming took place in New Orleans, Hawaii, and other locations. While Hawaii will always be associated as the home of the franchise, New Orleans truly became the home of several prime locations in Jurassic World. It featured several massive sets, such as the Samsung Innovation Center, Hammond Creation Lab, and Main Street. Unfortunately, despite how amazing these sets were, they would become extinct after filming had completed. While this fate is largely guaranteed for any film, the sets for Jurassic World were so intricately detailed that many fans wished they could have seen them in person. Three lucky fans were able to do just that back in 2014. They answered the call to become extras, additional background cast members for the film. I had the fantastic opportunity to discuss with them what their experiences on these incredible sets were like, scenes they were in, actors they saw, in the immersive, fictional park most could only dream of. This detailed recollection from an adventure nearly a decade ago begins with Anthony Feliciano and Bo Monarch. Join us now as they conjure the memories of their time in Jurassic World. So, Anthony, what is your Jurassic Park history? Well, I was born in 94, so by the time I came out of the womb, Jurassic was, like, all over the place. So I guess, like, that osmosis just, like, hit me as an infant. Did, <laughs> and did I just your mother remember... go see it while you were in the womb? Was that was your birthday? No. I okay. mean, she should have. Like, I'm so mad that she did not support it in 1993. I was like, where were you 30 years ago? She's like, not in the theater. I was like, mm. <laughs> We have, we have problems. <laughs> but um, I remember, like, as a kid, like, seeing it, like, on TV, like, not, not the movie, but, like, the commercials and the marketing for it everywhere. Uh, and I think this was before Lost World. And I was like, I need to see this movie. And uh, I think I saw it for the first time when I was, like, four or five years old. Uh, and it blew my mind. I got the VHS for Christmas of whatever year the VHS came out it was around for christmas and it was from my aunt and my parents would not let me watch it. so i'm at the time i'm about four i was born in 90 and i had seen the fence sequence at my babysitter's house where tim gets shocked off and that, that, that was all i'd seen it was right before i got picked up and it was a little bit later for whatever reason the babysitter wasn't available and i was home after school and it was raining and i put it in and it was like the perfect weather to watch it in as a little kid and it it just became an obsession. I sort of lived in the woods and I like to just go out in the woods and watch it. So how'd you end up hearing about slash getting to New Orleans address all that jazz? Yeah, so uh, I, I live in New York and um, uh, they were filming in Louisiana. Uh, and, uh, you know, I stalked the production for like 14 years of my life. I spent most of my life waiting for the fourth Jurassic Park movie. I think like most people probably now. <laughs> and um, I got this like ping of like a casting call to like submit a photo or whatever and the first time I did it I think I got rejected because um I guess like you weren't supposed to know it was Jurassic World uh so I I guess you weren't like because because I took and I thought this would help me stand out but I think it ultimately like made me not get it at first I like did like this photoshopped image of like me like leaning against like a t-rex and I was like god like I'm gonna stand out they're gonna like 
be like, great, let's get them. And I think they probably just assumed I was like an obsessed, crazed fan. So they were just like, no. <laughs> so I didn't hear anything back. So then um, that went nowhere. And then, uh, so I was disappointed, but I was like, whatever. Like, what are you going to do? And then there was like another casting call. They're like, we need anyone. So I, d- I took another photo, like without dinosaurs. And like that magically, like let them respond to me. And they were like, come down like in the next three days. And I was like, ah, <laughs> like, so they were like, you know, come with like three outfits. You're going to be a park visitor. Um, you know, so dress preppy, go to Banana Republic. So I did all that, booked a flight, ran down there as fast as I could. My big adventure was going there, uh, getting to my hotel and like, just like mentally preparing for the night. Uh, we had to wait for like our call sheet to come out, which I think probably came about like 10 PM at night. So I get like my call sheet, you know, had to report at 6 AM. Cool. I get this other document of like, you know, what to prepare. And my document says I'm playing a scientist, which is not what they told me on the phone. So, and there were, and the document said, you know, bring your white button down shirt and like your business, like casual and a business, no, businessy, fancy clothes, like a completely different aesthetic to what I had. So I'm in panic mode. I don't have any of that stuff. So <laughs> I like ran down to like the hotel lobby. This is like 10 PM at night. And I'm like, where can I go? And they're like, there's like literally nothing here. So like, I like had a hail a cab. I'm like, take me anywhere. They brought me to a Walmart. I went to a Walmart uh, uh, as they were closing and the manager's outside. He won't let me into the store. And I'm like, please, sir. I'm like, this is for a job. It's like very important. Can I just run in really quick and go in? He tells me no. <laughs> so so um, I had to run back to my taxi. Uh, and he took me to another Walmart, which did have like that stuff. So I like, purchased it ran back that cab fun fact cost me like over a hundred dollars this is before uber was a thing and all that stuff so it, it was such a nightmare so i got back to my hotel i think by like one or two in the morning i slept like an hour i woke up at like three in the morning because i had to be there by six and i was like i'm gonna prepare for any contingency like i'm gonna i'm gonna be there damn it it was pure panic mode because like i had never been to new orleans and like it was my first time there i didn't know a damn thing about anything uh and i was like 20 at the time so like i I had never gone anywhere by myself before like i was running on pure adrenaline for jurassic and um i get there uh i run down to the lobby to hail a cab i cannot get a cab to save my life and i felt like an idiot because i was like hi i like a cab will come by like hi i'm trying to get to nasa and they would go nasa and like drive away and i was like do they think i'm like lying i'm like i'm just trying to get to nasa at four in the morning like why does that sound weird (laughs) It's like, like they probably they were like, is he, is he, do I have a terrorist? Why, why are we going to NASA at four in the morning? <laughs> yes. So then I go to like the hotel lobby. I'm like, I can't get a cab, and like, I have to get to work. And uh, they're like trying to hail cabs. No, like they come by here NASA and drive away. And I'm like, I don't understand like why I can't get a cab. And the hotel people were like, basically, like there's not enough money to be made in taking you to NASA. Uh, but if you were going to the airport, that would cost you like 75 bucks and they want people who are doing that. So, so I'm panicking thinking like, Oh God, like, am I not going to be able to get to the set? Like, what am I going to do? And eventually some cab came and took me and I got there, I think at like five in the morning. So like I was, it was like an hour before my call time and I'm just sitting there just like pretending like I'm not a fan. And I see all the Jurassic world logos around and the lab and all this stuff. And I'm just like, holding in like all my screams and like any any like set pas or ad's that were around of like playing this up like way too much being like wow i can't believe this ebb tide movie is jurassic world how cool like as if i didn't know <laughs> well how, how did you find out by the way that ebb tide was jurassic world i think i think all fans knew at that point that that was the code name somehow we knew because that's what we were told to look for for casting like for extra yeah. work somebody posted it somewhere or something like it got leaked then yeah 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 I, I think like by that time in louisiana like they had already filmed in hawaii so like this was like the next like major move so like it was already called ebb tide in hawaii and then um coming to louisiana we're like ha we know <laughs> <laughs> no that that's good to happen that way then otherwise it may not have worked out for you guys right if it had been the reverse like if they had done the new orleans stuff first so that's pretty yeah pretty cool and we still don't know Absolutely. what ebb tide means do we i've been trying to I figure mean, that out it, 
it technically it's an you can be like an ebbing tide. I don't know if it's because they were like it's clever because we're on an island or because Louisiana has tied. It has nothing from, to do with the movie as far as I can tell. Yeah, like from my understanding, Ebb Tide LLC, like that was like what the company was because each film kind of like sets up their own, you know, temporary company as like, for insurance and all that fun stuff. From what I understood, Ebb Tide was around for like years. Uh, so I don't know if that was like a company they made, uh, you know, while they were developing scripts. And I think I think Spielberg actually, from what I heard, Spielberg was the one who came up with that title. How did it lead up for you, Bo? Like, how did you get to the point that Anthony's at in this timeline? They they put out the first casting call in June, and I somehow had read something about being preppy park goer or something, and so I sent those photos that I sent to you of me in like that button down with glasses. And never heard back. And then in early July, they put out that we need people thing. And so I sent an email. And it was with my Michigan driver's license because I still hadn't changed to Tennessee, which is where I'm now at. And I don't hear back. So I called. I called the production office and I was like, hey, I'm a big fan. I need to know because so I had started this job in March and it's July. And I'm like, I need multiple days off during the week so I can go be in a Jurassic Park movie. And my boss was awesome, and he let me go. Uh, They went through, they found me, they confirmed me, and I got in my car, and I drove straight through the night to Louisiana. I, at that time, my air conditioning was broken, and so I thought, you know, it'll be fine. And it was through Tennessee, and you know, Louisiana wasn't that bad, but Arkansas was like driving through a sauna, even with all of my windows down at one in the morning. It was, it was it was miserable. But then, so then I get to a hotel at four and I'm like, I'm, I'm going to check in here. And they're like, you want to check in? You're only paying for six hours. And I was like, yes, I would like to check in. I want to go upstairs and I want to go to bed and I'll be here for more days. So they're like, okay. And so I go in, I go up, I lay down. I hadn't brought any other preppy clothes. You know, I, I was under the assumption movies provide extra yeah, yeah. wardrobe. So Sometimes. Go and I oversleep. By it's like 6.30 or 7. And that's, and I pull up that thing on my phone. because my, So my phone had died in the night. Because I listened to the Jurassic Park audiobook on the way to Louisiana. Damn you, Jurassic Park. <laughs> I know. And so I read that and I get up and I rush to a Walmart. Because that was what they told me at the front desk was all they had. So... So I go and buy preppy clothes and I drive like a maniac and I get over to, you remember like the casting area they had across the street from NASA? Like that, yeah. Yeah. I drive over there and I get in and I'm alone. I find people and I'm like, okay, so I'm here for this. I'm behind. So they brought over a shuttle. I I got to ride a bus over by myself, which was nice. And so I went into wardrobe and stuff late. Well, I met uh, the makeup artist had to, I have a tattoo. And so they had to cover it because other people's art and you have to get clearance right, and right. whatnot yeah i didn't think about it but uh she was from about an hour and a half from where i grew up so we we chatted for a while and then i go into wardrobe and i've, I've got this walmart bag and they're like did you, did you buy clothes for this and i was like yeah and they're like you don't need to do that that's why i'm in a jurassic shirt both times as an extra and so they just put me in those and they're like return those don't that's sweet of you and i I was like, but that's what they, in my head, I'm like, that's what they told us. They said, bring all this stuff. And they had like a fairly large freaking wardrobe. I guess they didn't want everybody yeah. in Jurassic shirts or something. So the innovation center and the labs were in that like main hangar and they had tents and stuff. And so I was outside for the first half of the day, like just out under that white tent. And then I came in and I was, yeah. And so that was my, that was the first part of my adventure. There will be more adventure as we come back to Dave to and getting back down to Louisiana. And you reminded me when you mentioned wardrobe, um, because after I got my scientist outfit, I brought everything with me just to be on the safe side. I'm like, I'm going to bring the visitor outfits and the scientist. Like, no one's going to tell me no. I'm going to get there, damn it. And I get there when I show up and I find out I'm not playing a visitor and I'm also not playing a scientist. I'm playing a staff worker and they already have my wardrobe and I'm just going to go into a fitting. And I was just like, great. (laughs) God help me. (laughs) So there's the Raptor paddock. There was the interior of the innovation center. 
There was the interior of the Hammond Creation Lab, which is a separate set from the interior of the Innovation Center, which not everyone realizes that it's two separate sets. And then there's the Mosasaur Speeding Show Arena, which is literally just the seating where you see the people, right? And it's just one set of bleachers. Yeah, it was just a portion of it. 20, 30 feet up on wooden yeah. scaffolding. Exactly. And it was just like a section of it. And then they would film us over and over again from like different angles. And we would like rearrange. So actually, there's there is this one shot where um you can see I think I'm in like two places at once because like they because they duplicated uh, like the, uh-huh. the arena because like no 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 sane person is going to like actually sit there and like look for <laughs> like duplications but um but we're crazy and um because they duplicate us and we sat in different you know positions each time uh so it just looks like there's like twenty thousand people there uh but it is funny if you look closely you see like duplicate people just like copy and paste it all over the place that's pretty funny movie magic people movie magic <laughs> yeah (laughs) no that's great i see i love that kind of stuff yeah and also with the moses we're seeing it was my second day there actually um i only worked on the set two days my first day was in the innovation center and the second day was the moses we're seeing and i feel like this is like some weird divine intervention type of thing that happened because i wasn't even supposed to be there the second day of filming that yeah so um we we filmed the first day the first day was my innovation scene and i think you're in you're in that scene too aren't you a scientist or no, so which which innovation scene? Like where the kids arrive, or um, w- oh, I'm sorry, not the innovation. I'm sorry. Um, the 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 Hammond Lab portion. So I'm not. Oh, you're not. Oh, nope. My bad. <laughs> I I made it. I'm Innovation Center. I saw the lab was still under construction my first day. Oh, okay. Got it. And got so it, I had it. I had a couple of photos that I sent along to Derek, at, um, that another extra took for me. Oh, they were brave. I, I, I was horrified. I'm like, I don't even want to be seen with my phone. I'm like, I will toss it somewhere. Like, please don't fire me. I want to be here. <laughs> Day one, I, I knew you're not supposed to take pictures, but they didn't put the sticker over my camera because I was late. You're such a nedgery. <laughs> <laughs> and then, did you sit inside with the visitor center? Um, I, I, I wasn't in any of those scenes, but I no, uh. The old visitor center, the day when yes. we were shooting Mosasaur, and they okay, yes, blew my mind to see that. It was so cool. So I've got a couple pictures of the door because I was like, I need to have something. I need to have amazing because it was the it was the coolest thing to see. As like, I remember seeing like your the old visitor center like photos, and I mean, I'll just tell you now, like that was one of the most exciting things for me to find out was that we would be going back to the old visitor center because ever since. I saw the first Jurassic Park movie. I wanted to see the old visitor center in ruins. So when Jurassic World finally delivered that, maybe not as much as I had hoped, but at least they did enough where I was like, oh, my heart, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, it was exactly it was the yeah. You know, what was funny. Um, I didn't even recognize it when I was there. Um, I because I, I was sitting right next to it and another extra um, had like pointed out being like, that's the visitor center. And I was like, I thought it was just like a jungle set, and I was like, because it was so overgrown. Uh-huh. And, I, and then I like looked in closer, and you could, like you could kind of see like the remnants of it. I was like, huh, what do you know? <laughs> and I'm like yeah. trying to like hold in my excitement as like some like ads are passing by. And... As you walk down that hall to go to the bathrooms where like the fancy people ate, like did you do you see that area too? Oh yeah, they get to, where they get their fancy food. Um, you walked past the the oval windows of the visitor center. Like, yeah, the... yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was going by because I got in the door and I was like, I want to get this too. But there were every time I walked down that hallway, there was somebody else walking down that stupid hallway. Of course. Um, yeah. <laughs> but as far as Visitor Center goes, I got real lucky. And so I didn't push my luck. I, I wish I would. Yeah. <laughs> did you do the night shoot for the Mosasaur stuff? I did. Okay, um, so and that did was the it. interesting thing. Yeah. How it was like okay. shot in two different times of the day just to give that yeah. illusion of descending into the Moses mm-hmm. or aquarium and so we had shot the previous week the scene with zach and gray oh okay and so we were just doing tiling tiling and stuff mostly with you right that's the day and then we did the night shoot so that was how i i, I knew them because i was following the production and i knew where to sit i was moved oh. over by a family that sat closer to them oh my god because that was, that was a production choice damn um, 
I know well, that's, that's something to, to point out too because I kind of read into this a little bit so obviously correct me if I'm wrong but the way they shot the the Mosasaur feeding arena with you guys the stage or the set I guess doesn't move at all like it's just an illusion it's just the camera moves down and you guys kind of simulate motion right and then they filmed you know the part where it's under you know in the tank at night like you said to simulate that it's just you know underground basically so right it's all it's all fake people it's all an illusion <laughs> it's all an illusion you never had control that's the illusion that's the illusion <laughs> that is the illusion <laughs> there was no control they came at us with a dumpster full of water at a certain point i read somewhere that spielberg was the one who came up with the idea to have the seats end up going down to be submerged and that even though spielberg apparently wasn't on the set he would watch dailies and he had the idea of having the seats you know, mechanically go under, kind of like, you know, the rotating seats in the first movie. It's like, oh, just have them go under and let them continue to watch the Mosasaur as it devours the shark. So I guess you can thank Spielberg for you guys having to come back and do that whole bit. Yeah. Well, that's Absolutely. fun. That's delightful. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. If, that, if that's to be believed, I mean, I don't see why. I think it was like IGN reported that or something, or they put that in their article. So yeah, I've heard that, that before too. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Like we're officially part of a Spielberg idea, so that's kind of kind of nice to have. Earlier that day, we did the daytime Mosasaur, you know, just um, filming in different portions of this arena that was going to be copy and pasted. And then middle of the day, well, at least for me, I'm not sure if you were there. We shot in front of this giant green screen for the Tyrannodon attack, and they just had a so bunch. So you were of, one like, of the people they came and got off because I remember they came and got some people and had you go oh, off to the. That must yep. have been it. Yeah, that's right. I forgot they called us yeah. into that. Right. Yeah. So, I so I was still. I was, that might have been when I went in. When I was inside, I don't remember. You, you didn't even miss much because I don't even think they used it in the movie. Um, no. But they just like they were just like run, and I got yelled at by the prop master because they gave me they gave me like this iPad like prop, and they were like you know here's all your whatever and then they were like all right you're gonna run from pteranodon so run so like then we're all like running you know cowering whatever and then like i just remember like this person came up to me started yelling at me like why are you running with an ipad i was like because you handed it to me and then i was directed to run <laughs> and they were like don't run with this stuff and i was like all right i'm sorry i don't know what to tell you i'm doing what i'm directed to do <laughs> i didn't even think they were real ipads or anything none of the phones or anything they handed out seemed real anyway yeah i like was like i was like what? i was kind of just like whatever <laughs> but it was kind of so, funny so bo you're telling me the phones were out too the the phones were out Aaron. they they had there was nothing on the screens <laughs> they filled them in with yeah. both the later there was no <laughs> Moses, so that's right. I forgot. Yeah, because the iPads that they get, they had some. Of the, I think it was like a green box right in front of it or something. So yeah, I didn't understand really what the big deal was, but so be it. Uh, so then we filmed the Tyrannodon scene, and then later that day, uh, when when it became nighttime, they were like, "All right, like we're doing the Mosasaur scene again." But like this, this kind of comes into like where you knew more than I did. They were just like, "The Mosasaur is going to eat a shark," and I was like, "Okay, cool." But, like, I didn't know, like, it was going to be, like, a dead shark, like, on a string or whatever. I assumed it was, like, a shark, like, because, like, when they sat us down, it was, we were just sitting in front of a giant green screen. And they were, like, okay. And, like, I think we were being directed by, like, someone on a microphone being, like, all right. And, like, now the shark is there. And, oh, my God, it's great. Scream. You know, go crazy. And we're all, like, woo. But I remember, like, thinking, wow, like, if it's going to eat a shark, like, I would be disgusted if I saw that. So I was, like, should I act, like, disgusted? So, but, but I was directed to cheer. So I was like, I guess this is like supposed to be the reason why you're going to root for everyone to die later. <laughs> so be like, Admiral Cruelty, you cheered at that? Die. So, so I thought it was a creative choice and I was like, all right, cool. Uh, but I didn't know. And I just remember like them showering us with water, but it was like a 90 degree night. So like it kind of felt kind of nice to like be splashing amazing. water. Amazing. Yeah. And everyone's like cheering and like screaming as we're getting like, drowned in water but i was confused because like i didn't know like we, it was the aftermath of being splashed so i was like why i'm like are they gonna like i'm like how are they gonna clean this up so we did <laughs> so we just did the tyler earlier in the day so it must it was a couple days earlier that we did the splash with zach and, okay 
Keep going. I'm sorry. I didn't oh, realize gotcha. I'm oh, trying to I order my days saying. a little bit. Yeah. Well, well that's yeah. what's interesting because in the actual finished movie, Bo's in all the shots that are, you know, above water, basically. But you're not there, Anthony. Some guy in a hat is in your spot instead. But then once you go underwater, suddenly you're in hat guy's place and Bo is still in the same shot. So you guys do share one shot together in the finished movie, which is so perfect. Um, awesome. Especially. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> of, of the two extras to talk to. Yeah, so absolutely. The, little did you guys know that almost a decade later, which is how long it's been, by the way, nine years ago, you guys <gasps> shot this movie um, that you would right. be talking about it now. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just crazy that it's like, you know, continuity. But I mean, but no one notices these things, because when you're watching a movie, usually you're focused on the action taking place, you know, the, the lead characters or what they're seeing, you know, which in this case is a big you know, prehistoric reptile. So obviously right. gets more attention. <laughs> and that was funny too, because I remember, because I, I wasn't even supposed to be there that day filming the Mosasaur scene. And one of the extras that called me, uh, who I had met, was like, oh, are you coming to work today? And I was like, I wasn't, no one asked me to. And uh, she was like, call, like, see if they need me. So I called, I was like, hey, I have nothing to do. Do you need me? And they were like, sure, come in. And I got there. And I remember, I remember I was sitting somewhere else in that scene. And then, like, someone saw me and was like, you, like, go to the front. So I'm thinking, like, oh, this is awesome. I'm going to, like, be in the shot. And uh, I'm sat in the front. And because I guess, like, the guy who was in the hat wasn't there that day. And I guess I looked, like, the closest to him, which is why I was put there. Uh, No hat given, though. (laughs) Um, But I remember they gave me, like, a slicker to wear, which was kind of cool. Uh, and, but then I remember seeing, cause that can, uh, I don't, oh, Ty and Nick, I think are their names, the actors who play the kids in the movie. Uh, yeah, they yeah, were, Simpkins and Robinson. Yes, they were there too, but they were sat like further in the back. So I remember thinking like, oh man, like, I'm not going to be in this shot at all. Like the stars are not where I am. This sucks. <laughs> and, um, then like someone was going to move me. But I was like, but someone put me here and it was like a weird thing. And then like people were like talking to each other about like me sitting here. It was I didn't know they needed that much thought. And then eventually they were like, all right, fine. Like you, you stay. And so that is so strange. But it was cool to be like up front to like see like, you know, how they're filming this thing and like where the dumpster of water is and where (laughs) like how they're trying to pull this off in front of a green screen. And uh, we shot it. We shot it. I think th- we shot it a few different times. I remember, like they constantly doused us with water, and then they were like, "All right, like uh, cheer this way. Now cheer that way. Now you know, look at each other." And you know, they would direct us all different ways to how to react to this thing that clearly was not there. But um, then you see it in the movie, and it's like, "Oh, that looks pretty cool." <laughs> they pulled it off. Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah. So the the first part of the scene, and this is how it rolled into the more days. So I had been there and they wanted me back the next day for the visitor center some more. And then they took me out to shoot in the bleachers and they shot the first half of the scene with Ty and uh, Matt, Nick, Robinson. Yeah. <laughs> um, <Kids. laughs> and as well as the Mosasaur announcer. So oh, yeah. she was there for the whole first thing. So even other mosasaurs you know all that stuff we were privy to and then they oh, wow. splashed us and at the end of the day we're, they're like so we need everybody to come back for this day next week and so i'm up there i'm like okay i i'm from a 12 hour drive away is there any way that i can get like a little bit extra in my pay to come back and oh. the lady was like i'll check and then some lady pipes up behind me and is like well i had to drive two hours oh, no. and then it became Not clear that i it, it became clear that that was no longer an option. Like as soon as somebody else piped in, he's yeah. like, I, I'm not going to check into that. Right. And so yeah. I drive home, tell my mom about the experience. And she's like, you have to go back. And I was like, nice. I can't be. She's like, we have to go back. <laughs> Sorry. Look, it's, I'm ready. I've got, I'm growing this Jack beard so I can go back. <laughs> um, Lost humor for those not in the know. <laughs> Um, and so she was kind enough to pay for my gas to go back. Oh, and so Mama the year. I, yeah. And so, well, so I was supposed to leave that night right after shooting and drive back. I was supposed to go to work the next day. You remember the pizza they had for us? Yes. I took home like 20 boxes to my <laughs> hotel. 
I gave it to the uh, staff when I came back. I'm like, I got these from work. You want them? Yeah, because them they were away. trying to get rid of them. I was yeah. like, my two pieces were enough. Yeah, they fed us uh, multiple times throughout the day. But yes, I nice. thought I lost my keys on the bleachers because I could not find them. I thought they got splashed out of my pockets or something. And so earlier in the week, I had met a couple extras that I had befriended. And one of them is sitting directly next to me in the Mosasaur scene. He's unfortunately cut off in like the closer shot. Like he's oh, he's the man. dead cut off. <laughs> um, and so we go back and this PA takes us back and I can't find him on the So we're walking and I'm telling him the Jurassic Park fan, whatever. And he's like, Do you want to see the visitor center? I was like, Well, I, I worked on it the other day. He's like, No, the visitor center. I was like, Yes, I would. And so he took us in and we we only got to go like right through the doors. But and see the whole lobby. It was one of the coolest things in my life. And I, in my head, I was like, it will be pushing it to give him my cell phone number and be like, will you take a picture of me and text me after the movie comes out? I was like, they've already, this guy's already spent an hour searching with me and has to come back in the morning. And he's let me do this. And the banner was down. It was, it was amazing. And then so I, I called my boss and I'm like, I'm not making it in tomorrow. I don't know where my keys are. <laughs> and so this extra lets me come back to his house. And this is this is the second time this has happened. The first time it happened too, but I locked my keys in the car and they got somebody to come get them out for. Me. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm just living living that dream. And but he lets me stay the night. And so I called the bus company at three in the morning when they opened. And it turned out they had fallen out of my pocket on the bus to set. Oh, and so I went and picked him up in the morning. I gave the bus driver a hug. I was so excited to get my freaking keys back because the cost to get new keys made was stupid. In the next segment, Anthony and Bo continue to look back at their experiences in the Samsung Innovation Center and Hammond Creation Lab, including a look at some wonderful props. <laughs> 